Well, I'm back up here on my roof early in the morning and I want to talk about three things to consider before you start building out your off-grid solar setup. So the first one I want to talk about is critically important and a lot of people either completely skip over this or don't really do a thorough job on it. And that is you got to spec out your needs before you buy anything, before you do anything, figure out how much you need. And you do that, you figure out all the things you're going to be running so you find how much power you're going to need. Are you going to be running an air conditioner, a toaster, a television, whatever you're going to be running, the total load of things that you're going to be using. And then you times that by how long you're going to be using it, how many hours, and that'll give you the amount of energy. And you got to start here because you're going to need to know how much power you're going to be running. That'll tell you how big of an inverter you're going to need, and you're going to need to know how much energy you're going to need to store to know how many batteries you're going to need and then from there you can figure out how many solar panels you're going to need so you're going to have to also figure out how many days you're going to go without sun so do you live somewhere with a lot of sun or do you just some or do you live somewhere with a little bit of sun so when you add up your power and your energy use you're also going to have to times that by days are you going to go two days three days four days without sun well then you're going to have to factor that in to your equation once you get all of this, that'll tell you your basic needs for your system. Then you can start specking out things. You can start figuring out how many solar panels you're going to need, how big of an inverter you're going to need, how much batteries you're going to need. But you got to figure out your usage first before you do anything else. So now on to the second thing. And that is, some of this equipment is not exactly what you think it is. Let me give you an example. So, you spec out your system. You know how much stuff you're going to need, so you go, okay, I need you know four solar panels at 250 watts. So you look at a solar panel, and on the back of it it says it's 250 watts. So you think, well, geez, okay, I need four of these are 250 watts. But see, that's standard test conditions. You will never achieve that. And I know there's going to be somebody out there that says, well, hey, my 100 watt solar panel, I actually get 120 watts on it. Well, maybe you do. But here's the thing: is in the morning in the afternoon, in the evening, the sun's in a different location, if you don't have your stuff at the right angle, direction, um, if it's hot, if it's cold, if it's snowing, if you get dirt on your panels, all of these are going to affect it. So the number you see on your solar panel isn't really what you're going to get. In my experience, you're going to get 75, maybe 80 percent of what they call the standard test conditions. So just consider that when you're specking out things. In general, always get a little bit more than you think. You know, if you think four solar panels are going to do it, really think about it and maybe get five. And now the final thing you got to consider is that you're going to have to monitor stuff. There's nobody in the North America that does this all day that sits around watching their electrical meter. It just doesn't happen. But when you're off grid, you're going to be constantly monitoring everything. You're going to be constantly adjusting everything. You're going to be watching your battery. You're going to be watching your inverter. You're going to have Bluetooth. You're going to have an app on your phone. You're going to be looking at it. You're going to be constantly staring at it because you're going to be constantly needing to monitor everything. Because let's assume you did the first two steps and you spec'd it out properly. You got the right equipment. There's still going to be things that come up. There's still going to be days where you didn't plan for it. You know, say you spec'd it out and you figure, you know, four days of non-sun, and then you go an extended period and you get six days of non-sun, and your batteries start getting lower. You're going to have to make adjustments to that. So what do you do in those situations? Well, if you're rich and you have an endless supply of money, then you can just buy a huge amount of batteries and not worry about it. But for the rest of us, you're going to have to have a backup plan. You know, does that include a generator? Uh, does that include um, access to shore power that you can charge things in extended a period of extended low light? So, you know, how are you going to deal with something that comes up that you're not expecting? Because something's going to come up. You know, you're going to be monitoring this, you're going to see something. Um, does that mean that you don't use certain items when you would plan on using them? Think about all these things. So these are all things you're going to have to consider. What do you do when an event happens that exceeds what you estimated? Be ready for it because it's going to happen. So those are my three quick things. If anyone out there has a question or comment or has more things to add to the list, please feel free to leave a comment below. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will talk to everybody soon.